Hi folks, MKC here. After seven years since I started my programming journey, I was promoted to the lead front-end engineer uh, position at Smart Recruiters. This is one level uh, above the senior. So this is obviously a huge uh, achievement for me, especially having in mind uh, my humble beginnings. Today I will show you advice on mindset, on learning, on what you can do to actually uh, advance your career quickly and to become a successful programmer, stuff that have worked for me well uh, over the years. Most of these ideas are not my own. This is remix of the stuff that I learned over the years from books, from internet and from people uh, that I met in my um, real life. I will keep it high level if you are interested in the details. If you have some questions, reach out uh, via comments and I will record a separate video or uh, talk about this topic with Przemek uh, during the podcast episode. Just one remark, I don't know how general this advice actually is. This is something that worked for me, worked for some people, but I'm not 100% sure that it will also work for you. So be aware of this, but I think that you will learn something useful today. If you will leave a thumbs up uh, under the video, consider subscribing to the channel and without the further ado, let's go uh, to my first point. My first point is actually about the mindset. This is really important uh, and something that I can see uh, a lot of beginners struggling with. I also was uh, struggling with this is like changing the mindset to from the sprint to the ultra marathon which learning how to program and becoming software engineer actually is. If you are looking for a quick and easy money in programming that you can get in six months, one year, there is none left. There was none when I started in 2015 and obviously uh, there is none in 2022. So I landed my first internship one year after I have started uh, to learn how to code. This first year was pretty chaotical. Uh, I started with Python, then I went with JavaScript. I was all over the place. I didn't know much. When I started this internship, I was like still uh, pretty useless to be honest uh, to my employer. Um, and obviously uh, this resulted in a really low salary. It was much lower uh, than the one that I got uh, at my part time uh, at IKEA. So I was uh, broke before that and I was even more broke uh, when I actually started uh, my journey uh, as a programmer. After the internship, I got the junior position there. So in my first job uh, for two years, I was making shitty money. I was working mostly on legacy code, uh, not too much JavaScript at all. Uh, so I still had to invest most of my free time on learning modern front-end development, something that I want to uh, go into later in, the, in my career. Um, and like my life was far from com comfortable. I was broke. Uh, first few years with, with programming were actually really tough for me. And after those three years, I landed my first job at Krakow. Uh, I got paid uh, like a little more than 5k uh, PLN, uh, which actually lets you live quite comfortably in a big city in Poland like Krakow. Uh, I could rent an apartment uh, I had for my life expenses and I could even uh, save something for the future. So this was like a already huge improvement for me, but still I had to like put a lot of my free time uh, to grow even more. But this all was worth worth it. Two more years, so uh, to sum up, five years since I started to learn how to code, I landed my position at uh, Smart Recruiters uh, as a senior engineer and I got paid uh, like more than 10K and this was like a huge improvement. But as you can see, five years is not six months, is not one year. Uh, in my opinion, the most important to actually be successful at this learning endeavor, at this uh, advancing as a beginning programmer is making this mindset shift that not money is most important resource uh, at the moment for me, it's actually my time and my energy because this is the stuff that I can use to learn, to grow and to become better uh, employee, to become a better engineer. And to have as much time and energy, you have to sacrifice a lot of stuff 
uh, and some of this stuff seems like a obvious part of everyday life but it actually isn't so what you should do is to uh, at all cost avoid uh, activities and stuff in your life that will steal uh, your time and energy social media daily news politics partying toxic relationships doing more shopping than needed uh, cooking more than needed this way you can save a lot of time that you can invest in advancing yourself as a software engineer and we have like this second category of, of stuff that actually will help you have more time and energy in the long run and by that i mean prioritizing sleep i mean doing sports having a gym membership i know it can be a huge cost if you don't have money and to spend like 100 zlotys on gym membership sounds like a lot uh, but this will actually add time and energy uh, to your life because you will feel better your brain will work better uh, and this will help you uh, to actually advance faster meditation reading journaling this uh, this is all like activities that add to your time and energy uh, bank in the long run and are great investments for yourself then there are like some skills that actually let you maximize uh, your time and energy so if you learn how to learn actually to how to use books how to use internet to learn uh, you will grow faster obviously there is this book that i often recommend it's called mind for numbers then you should also spend some time learning basics of time management the obvious classic here is getting things done and the last but not least is learning enough english uh, so you can comfortably uh, learn uh, in this language read books listen to podcasts watch videos english is a huge lever when it comes to uh, being a self-taught uh, programmer and then when it comes to learning programming invest a lot of time in learning fundamentals i know there is like a strong temptation to jump right into the sexy stuff that is at the top of the job descriptions that you read react angular views felt whatever this uh, stuff is obviously important if you want to specialize in front-end development this is something that you have to uh, have a good grasp of but not uh, before you have a good grasp on the fundamentals and by the fundamentals i mean data structures i mean algorithms i mean problem solving skills uh, i mean also uh, having uh, experience with terminal with git this is stuff that is often not listed at all in job descriptions but is actually checked uh, during the job interviews and people are like surprised oh i didn't even know that i have to know this uh, is this even important yes it is this is like the, the the fundamentals of being a software engineer and to build those like programming fundamentals i would once again recommend doing cs50 course from harvard this is really solid stuff if you do all of the exercises all of the projects you will have uh, good enough uh, fundamentals then uh, focus on having a deep understanding of javascript language if you are interested in frontend obviously i read the you don't know js book series it's not that up to date anymore but still there are a lot of uh, valuable information about how the javascript language actually works so you have a, a good understanding of that then you can proceed to learning frameworks and all of this sexy stuff that you think is, is the most, most important at the beginning learning is a process it's a time-consuming process uh, and what is important is to learn in public uh, what this means in practice is actually starting a programming block uh, on which you will document your learning uh, process your learning uh, journey why this is a great idea teaching actually uh, helps you to learn more effectively you can easily identify gaps of your gaps in your understanding like you have to like simplify you have to extract what is the most important 
And this has a huge positive impact on the on your learning process. So when you have a blog, when you are learning in public, at the same time working on really important soft skill, which is called writing, obviously. This skill is really important for a software engineer, especially in the age of remote work. You will write documentation, you will write a lot of Slack messages, um, and uh, this is stuff that will help you actually advance as a software engineer even uh, if it doesn't seem like it. When you will learn in public, you will at the same time promote yourself. This is stuff that you can uh, put into your CV, uh, similarly to your portfolio. This will show people that you have uh, like dedication, that you care about this stuff, you learn on a regular basis. So this is like a huge uh, plus that will make you stand out from the crowd of other beginners. There is a huge uh, discussion uh, about going to college. Is it worth your time? I would say it's worth your time because it's uh, for free, at least in Poland. Uh, if you are in US uh, or in some other country when you have to pay for your college for your university, uh, I would uh, like reconsider. But if uh, the higher education in your country is free, I would definitely do this. I did this after dropping out of law degree. Uh, I uh, like attended uh, information and communications technology at uh, university in Bydgoszcz. This didn't add too much to my practical skills uh, that I use in my uh, job, but it was crucial for me uh, to, to land this uh, first internship, to land the first job. Uh, it added some credibility to my person and it also uh, involved uh, some tax benefits uh, for my employer. This was a small company, so this was actually important for them. If I wouldn't uh, be a student, uh, I most likely wouldn't have a chance to learn uh, there and maybe I wouldn't be here at all. This may sound really cliche or really obvious, but from my uh, uh, personal experience, it's not that obvious in practice. Uh, what I want to say is be a great employee and a great colleague. What this means in practice for me is uh, the first thing. So if your manager or your colleague is looking for someone uh, to do an extra task, be a volunteer and do it you will learn something new. Obviously, you will have to work harder, you will have to endure more stress, but at the beginning, this is what you have to do. You, you have to sacrifice your comfort, your time uh, to learn faster, to, to improve. So, so this is a great opportunity that will help you advance quicker. But being a yes man is great, uh, but you actually have to deliver the stuff that you committed to. Uh, and if I would rely uh, on memory when it comes to all of the commitments that I made, uh, I would fail miserably. But I have this great habit that I can recommend to you, is that I write everything down that I uh, like commit to and that is mentioned on, on a meeting that uh, has an impact on, on my work, on my time. Uh, I use Todoist task management app and this app has a great quick add feature. So if I'm on a meeting in person or remotely, if something like this comes up, I open this quick add and I write down, I write the, the date when something has to be delivered, what has to be delivered, all of the context in the description, I press enter and I don't have to worry about it. I can focus on the meeting uh, and I can write the next stuff down if something comes up. This way, even if like 20 things comes up, I have everything written down. And I always had this uh, rule, help others first, then do your stuff. If someone comes up to me and asks for help, um, I try to help them uh, if I can. Uh, even if uh, it means that I will be uh, late on my task, I will put more work uh, into my stuff uh, later, but I want to help uh, people so, so they can also deliver their stuff. Obviously, this makes me happy that I can help. Uh, this push a whole team forward uh, and people that you help will actually want to help you uh, in the future and you will need uh, some help for sure sooner or later. And one more thing regarding like team interactions. Uh, for me, it's really important to do the homework first and then ask questions. 
So that is this advice that you should ask as much questions as possible. There are no stupid questions, da da da. Uh, to be honest, I don't agree. Uh, as programmers, uh, we can get much knowledge ourselves. We can read the code, we can read the commit history, we can check the stack overflow. Then if we are still stuck or we need some more context, then we can reach out to people. But asking questions before doing uh, the homework, in my opinion, is unrespectful uh, of, of time and energy of your colleagues. So I always first do the homework and then if I still have questions, I ask them. And the last advice, which is actually double-edged sword, let's say, is having really high expectations uh, for yourself. This is, in my opinion, the only way to actually exceed uh, the expectations of the market, of other people, because if you have a really high bar for yourself, most of the people will put it lower, uh, so you will exceed what they expect uh, from you. What it means in practice for me is having a clear plan for a day, having some goals that I want to hit. If I don't hit them, I learn from the mistakes, I analyze why something didn't happen the way that I wanted it to happen, and I try to don't make the same, same mistake Again, I also think being humble and open is really important, especially at the beginning. There will be like a lot of people that are better than you at programming, at, at soft skills. It's great to observe them and see what they are doing differently uh, than you. Uh, because there is a lot of stuff that you don't know that you don't know yet. But remember one stuff which is really crucial for your mental health, for your self-esteem, is that not all of the stuff is under your full control. You have to obviously take 100% responsibility under stuff that is under your control. Your time, your energy, how you spend your time, how you spend your energy, but some of the stuff won't be under your full control. The decision about your application to a junior position is not under your control. You can control how much did you prepare, you can control have you learned from, from the interview, uh, the questions that you didn't answer. This is the stuff that will let you succeed in the long term, but in the short term, you don't have uh, control over these uh, individual decisions uh, of, of other people, so don't take them personally. When I think about how it all uh, turned out for me, uh, there was a lot of luck involved. Uh, luck most in the form of great people that have helped me, that uh, have sensed my potential and helped me realize it. Without them, I most likely wouldn't be there when I am, even with all of this great advice that I'm giving you. But there is this great saying that luck is actually when the preparation meets opportunity. So this comes back to this uh, taking responsibility of what you have control of. If you put the hard work in, uh, if you put the sacrifices, the opportunities will come, you will take them and you will be in a great place, which I wish for you, obviously. Uh, I hope that you learned uh, something uh, from my advice, uh, from my experience. If you have any questions, reach out in the comments. If you like the video, leave the thumbs up, subscribe the channel, have a great day, have a great week, bye bye.